Hi everyone, Pandana here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a good weekend. Today we're talking all about the long-awaited Regiments DLC. Yes, Winds of Change is finally releasing on the 16th of August, two years after the original release of the game. Obviously, in the interim period, Regiments has had some updates and some free units added and things like that. But this DLC will see the addition of the French, Dutch, Canadian and Czechoslovakian forces, as well as an eagerly anticipated game mode, which is Warpaths. This is a procedurally generated campaign. Or should I say campaigns, because obviously, with it being procedurally generated, you can play it over and over and over again and get a different experience every time. Think of it a bit like the operations, but a little bit less scripted, a bit more freeform and a bit more randomized. Anyhow, introduction out of the way, the plan for today is we're going to hop in the game shortly and have a look at the new Warpaths mode and all its settings and set one up and see how it starts. But before we do that, we're going to have a look at this handy list or image they've provided us of all the new units coming to the game. Actually, that's a lie because it's not all the new units. They unfortunately didn't have room to fit on the UK Paras or the DDR Luftstrom Regiment 40. Those are part of the new big addition to the DLC, which are the airborne troops. Now, they're all the way at the right hand side of this image, but basically they are troops that will come in in helicopters. They get dropped off and then the helicopters leave. So you actually have sets of infantry squads that don't have any vehicles with them, which is obviously new to the game. The other new thing that's also at that side of this image are the fighter jets. So they are also a new addition. However, let's have a look through this, starting with recon at the left hand side. So all the units are obviously just sort of merged together in a pile, but blue is obviously NATO, red is obviously packed, and the nation flags are also included for your reference. So first up, we've got the AVGP Cougar. Then down below that, we've got the Lynx RV, which is, it looks like a box. It is literally a box, isn't it? We've got the AMX 10 RC for the French. Obviously that was gonna make an appearance. The ERC 90 F4 for the French and the VLTTP4, units we are familiar with from games like Warno. Uh, then we got the AMX 13105 for the Dutch, and the CNV3, which is an M113 variant with a cannon on top. Then over for the Czechoslovakian side, we've got the BPZV, an OT65, and an OT65A. And obviously all of those are recon units, so they come with the recon bonuses. And of course, let's see how amazing the AMX 10 RCs are in game, because they seem to always perform well in new gen games. Okay, next up tanks and anti-tanks. So let's do the same as we did last time, even though there's sort of mixed up even more here. So we've got the Leopard C1 for the Canadians, the AMX 30B for the French and the AMX 30B2 for the French as well. No surprise there. And then we've got the Leopard 1V for the Dutch. And then the T55 AM1 is coming in for the Czechoslovakian units. We get the Iltis Tow for the Canadians and the M113A2 TUA. Basically the usual M113 box, but with a tow launcher on top. Then, of course, we've got the Vab Hot. Again, all of these are familiar units, right? We've seen them in Wargame and Warno and stuff like that. And then we've got the YPR76PRAT, which I'm pretty sure appears somewhere in Wargame Red Dragon. Someone can correct me on that. And then finally down here, the USSR, or the Russians getting a new unit, which is a T-72B. And yes, you will be pleased to know that it has the same range as a T-80 in this. It's not got a short range like it does in Warno. Okay, let's move on to support. So first up is the ADATs for the Canadians, anti-air defense system. Then we've got the 53T2 for the French. That's just a little anti-aircraft gun. We've got the AMX-13 DCA and the AMX-30 Roland. Then we've got a TRM-2000. 53 t2 so that gun strapped to the back of a truck and then the dutch get the prtl which is basically a gepard and then the czechoslovakians get the 1s91 which is a radar system for the cub which incidentally is the next unit here the 2k12 cub 
They will also be getting another mouthful, which is the PLDVKVZ.53-59, which is an armoured truck with an anti-air cannon on it. Then the USSR will also get a new unit. They're getting the ZU-23-2, which is a towed anti-aircraft gun, a bit like the French one. Then we're getting the French 155mm GCT ALF-1, obviously a very familiar unit to anyone who's played Wargame and Warno. And then the French will also get the MO120RT, it's a 120mm towed mortar. Czechoslovakia will get the Pram L, again another towed or infantry mobile mortar. And the Russians or USSR will get the 2B11 mortar. And then we get the usual array of trucks, so the Canadians will get the MLVW, the French will get the TRM2000, the Dutch will get the YA4440 and the Czechoslovaks will get the V3S. Next up are some APCs and IFVs. So first up is the Canadian AVGP Grizzly. And that's actually all the Canadians get here. So they're pretty weak in this area. The French get the standard VAB. They get the VAB M2, obviously with the M2 machine gun on it. They also get the VAB T20-13, which has the auto cannon on it. Then the Dutch get the YPR765PRCO. It's a box with a gun, basically. They also get the YPR765PRI.50, which it's hard to make out from this picture, but I think that means it's got a 50 cal. Then we get some IFVs, so we've got the French AMX 10PC, pretty familiar unit again. We get the YPR 765 PRI standard, which is the aforementioned Dutch unit, but with an autocannon. And we also get the OT 62B for the Czechoslovakians. Obviously, there are an array of new infantry units as well. So the Canadians will get standard infantry. They will also get paratroopers. The French will get fusiliers and marines. The Dutch will obviously get the infantry. The Czechoslovakians will get the Strelki and the Vajasakari. I'm pronouncing that horribly. I apologize. And as we mentioned at the start of the video, there are also paras for the UK and also the DDR Luftrum Regiment 40. Okay, winding back slightly, we have helicopters down at the other side of this screen. So the Canadians will get the CH-136 and the CH-135. The French will be getting the Gazelle Hot, again a familiar unit, and the Gazelle 20mm, as well as the SA-330 Puma. Then the Dutch will be getting the BO-105C. The West Germans will be getting the CH-53G. The Czechoslovakians will be getting the MI-2CSLA. And the Americans will be getting the UH-60. Obviously, as you can probably tell there, a bunch of transport choppers have been added for the new airborne troops. And finally, we're moving on to the jets. So again, a nice selection here. The Canadians will get the CF-188. The French will get the Jaguar GR-1. The Americans are getting an F-16. And the Dutch will be getting the F-16A. The Czechoslovakians will be getting the MiG-21 CSLA and the MiG-29 CSLA. And the Russians or the USSR will also be getting the MiG-29. So in general, new units all round for mostly everybody, and I'm sure, you know, they'll appear in other regiments. And the other nice thing is there's some new capability there with the airborne troops and things, allowing for a slightly different playstyle by having just infantry on their own on the field rather than having some kind of vehicle with them. All right, anyhow, let's hop in the game and take a look at Warpaths and its various settings. Hi everyone, so welcome to the in-game portion. The first thing we're going to do is look at the Warpaths menu and the options and everything else. And then during this week, I'll put up videos of me playing through a little campaign, just so you can see what it's like. However, we won't do that today. What I will do is pull up a few little clips from the skirmish mode where we can have a look at the new units in action. 
So I'll play that separately and then pull up a few clips rather than pull up an entire skirmish mission. So first up, let's click on War Paths. Save slots like you get for the operation. Separate though, so you can have up to eight ongoing War Path campaigns at a time. If we click on one, you can see here we get Embark on the War Path and these are our basic options. Pretty much like setting up any other mission, right? So at the top there, you get Operation Length, anywhere from three stages all the way up to 18. I'm going to select three. You can have NATO or Warsaw Pact. And then you can choose any of the nations. I'm going to choose the French, because they're new. And then you can choose any of the regiments that are available in the skirmish mode. And I'm going to leave it as a 6th E, because I really want to play with the AMX 10s. Now... The main body of these platoons will be largely the same. So if I hover here, you'll see that uh, you get at the side there, whatever's going to be in that platoon or regiment as default. So that will be largely the same. It won't really change. What will change is this. So if you go over the question mark, you can see all the task forces. So when you actually start it, you'll get a choice of nine of these randomly selected from this selection and they can change. So there could be upgraded units, older versions of units, newer versions of units. Apparently they will be randomized. I'm not sure if that's fully in yet, but that's the intent. Our preview version has a few things that aren't completed, and one of them is on the next page, which I'll talk about. But just to mention that not everything may be exactly the same, like bugs and balancing issues still exist. They're still doing internal testing. But that's the gist of it. You choose your main regiment or division, and then the task forces will be a bit more randomized within that, just to give every playthrough a bit of difference. So even if you choose the same division or regiment, then the next playthrough with that one will be a little bit different because your task forces will be different. So the next thing I want to mention while we're on here is obviously with it being procedurally generated, it's not following a sort of narrative or anything. So it's a bit more randomized. The maps are randomly chosen from the skirmish map pool and there will be at least two additional brand new maps. And then there will be different variants of existing maps. So coming at it from different angles and things like that. Each stage will feature a random mission objective, so attack, defense, meeting, engagement, raid, recon, enforce, escort, or interception, and then there will be sub-objectives within that. So the idea being there'll be lots of variety. They're aiming for hundreds of different combinations. Whether they get that many, I don't know, but that's their plan. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so you choose your opponent. You can either choose the Warsaw Pact, the group of Soviet forces in Germany, the Southwestern forces, Second Northern Front. We'll just leave it on all Warsaw Pact for now. You get to choose your starting resources, unit count, reinforcement price, and regiment condition. So you can make the game as hard or as easy as you want by adjusting all of these. There's advanced rules if you want to change those. And then you've got your usual difficulty setting. We've been playing on hard previously, so we'll just stick with that. I've forgotten how to play, so it'll probably go horribly, but it'll be good fun. So if we hit to battle, this is a screen we're more used to, right? With a slight difference on the right hand side, but we'll get to that. So again, you've got all your units here. You've got your upgrade options, repair options, everything else. And then we've got our task forces. So as you can see, it's randomly selected nine. And then as you may also be able to see, some of them have upgrades. So that's now rank two, that's rank one. This is where the randomization comes in. We're going to select this one because it's got the Puma Marines, and that's one of the new units. And then there's also the VAB there, which has the Toad Mortar on it. We get Oh, we get that here as well. Never mind, it's right there. So we get the VAB with the Toad Mortar there by the looks of it, and we get the Marines. So that's going to be great for showing stuff off when we actually play this during the week. So I'll call that in. Uh, we still got some points left, so could we call in anything else? I wish we could. We could call in some VABs, AMX 10s. We already got some of those. Uh, we can't afford the AMX 30, sadly. Okay, well, we'll leave that for now. Maybe we can, if we go back, 
we can call in something else or upgrade some of these. So one of the other differences you'll notice here down at the bottom is we now have signals intelligence. So it provides more information on enemy forces during the battle. It decays by one point in each phase. So our intelligence gets worse the longer we're playing. However, upgrading it gives us lots of bonuses. So at the start, you'll just get groups of units arriving. And as you get higher, it will give you almost real-time updates on where the enemy units are. Even if you can't see them normally, they'll just flash up. Obviously, it's going to get very expensive if we do that. But each time it will also decrease over time. So every phase, you've got to weigh up, is the investment worth it to get that intel versus the fact that that investment isn't permanent. It will gradually get worse. And then obviously we've got the usual deployment points and everything else. Let's stay, Let's spend some... No, we'll save our points for now. We'll hope we can do okay and then spend some on some tanks next time. The next thing which is new is on the right here. So you'll notice straight away this says disabled in preview. So at the start and at the end of each of the sort of turns you take in this, each of the sections, you will have to choose a course of action. You will get a choice of two courses of action, which are basically different missions. So this one is an intercept and then the other one might be an attack and you will choose which one you want. The third option will be a rest and refit. So at each stage, you'll be able to rest and refit and regenerate some of your forces. But at the cost of victory points. So you know, as you play, you get victory points and you want victory points to win the entire campaign at the end, as you'll remember from the operations. Well, you'll have to spend those victory points to rest and refit. So there's a penalty. The other thing you can do in this is retreat. So if you choose intercept and it's going badly, you can fully retreat to save your forces. So you'll, again, lose victory points for that, I understand it, but you can save your forces rather than lose them all. So there'll be like different options available. We'll have a look at that hopefully when we play this through during the week. I'm just going to click on two events just to demonstrate here. So there are some new events. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a complete list, but there are some new ones which is provided in one of the dev blogs. So there will be repair depots being damaged, so it takes longer to refit destroyed platoons and everything like that. There is a weather warning one. There are the new air tactical aids where they become 50% cheaper. So the air tactical aid um, is like air cover. So air superiority fighters will cover an entire area of the map for a certain number of minutes. They don't actually appear by the looks of it. I assume maybe they come in if the enemy jets come in. I'm not sure. But it's just like an area is covered. And the idea is it's cheaper than or doesn't use points up like it would bringing in actual air defense on the ground. And there'll also be a missile brigade where a single use tactical ballistic missile will be an option as well to use during that phase. So a few new options. I don't know if there's more than that, but they're the ones that are provided in the blog. So there you go. That's the setup. What I'll do now is go and do a few skirmishes just to show you some of the new units and make some clips. But otherwise, I'll see you all during the week for actually playing this campaign. Okay, so what I thought we'd do is I picked the French because they've got some new units. I just thought I'll put some down. We can have a look at the ones that they've got here. So we've got the MX-10 RCs. We'll call some of those in. We'll call in the MX-30s. We'll call in the ALF-1s. We'll call in the VAB with 120mm mortar so we can see it fire and deploy. Uh, and we'll grab the Fusiliers because why not? Let's unpause it. I'm not going to play this properly. I'm just going to show you the units. I'm all spread out a bit. There's AMX 13s as well. Let's get those in. That's the anti air unit. And we'll switch to other divisions to see, or other nations to see other stuff. So, quick look at these first. So, there's our towed units. So, we click on them. 
we press X to deploy them. And the little guys get out the back and mount their guns, and then we can tell them to attack something. These are our AMX 13s with their little AA guns. We have our AMX 10 RCs, the bane of everyone's existence playing against the French in Warno. We have our AMX 10 Ps. We'll get those infantry out of there, shall we? Let them deploy. Our mortars are under attack from counter battery fire. Our AMX 30 B2s. And have a quick look at those. They do have their auto cannons. So well equipped as always. And then over here we've got those ALF ones. Which they look weirdly top heavy, don't they? I never really zoom in on them properly in Warno, but they do they they sort of have a really weird look to them because of the size of the top. Fine. So that's kind of the new French stuff. Let's hop in and have a look at something else that's new, which is the radar systems for the anti-air units. Okay, so now we're in with the Czechoslovakian units. So I've got some MI-8Ts with infantry in. These guys just deploy, as other units do. So if I hit X, they will land and the infantry will deploy. Once the infantry deploy, the helicopters will just go off the map. And my infantry are now an independent unit. We can run over this way. I just say I can change the mode here. So I'm actually curious. Can I change the mode and do the helicopters come back in? They are just sat here. So technically I think they can come back in. Hang on. Another oh, no, vanished now. Okay. They retreated. Something to stop there and then change mode. I think that must just not work. I feel like that's one of those bugs where that should probably vanish after they've been deployed. I could be wrong. Anyhow, this was one of the other new units. I just thought it looked pretty cool. This is a little armoured truck. Which looks like something the Germans had in World War II, to be honest. Uh, with the anti-air gun on there. And then, the other new thing is this. So, this is our Cub. And at the back you can see the Cub now comes with a radar system. So, for these Cubs to function, it has to have the radar system. So, I assume if that gets destroyed, the Cubs will no longer be able to fire at stuff. Because, obviously, they don't have their own radar system. So, it's not like the other anti-air systems where it's got a little radar dish on it. This one, the Cubs, need the radar to work correctly. So that's sort of some of the new units that are in there. The other thing which I haven't seen yet, and they're not an option to call in, obviously, we've got the MiG-20, that we can do with that one. So we've got the MiG-29 Air Patrol. So rather than call in ground air units, you can now use this, which is an air patrol. So you select it, you click an area of the map, and if I zoom out, can you see with a square? You can kind of see the edge of it there, I think, on the probably on the trees more than anything else. So that's the area. So if I put that in the middle of the map, we now get a MiG-29 Air Patrol for three minutes. You don't see them. I don't know if they appear when enemy air units are in the area, but they looks like they have four missiles. So they'll be able to engage four targets or fire at a target four times if they miss. So that's just like another air defense option rather than having to spend on bringing in units. So rather than spending your deployment points, you can spend your tactical support. But yeah, some nice new bits. I really like the infantry. The infantry have some really cool weapons as well. I'm not sure these guys have them, but the uh, American teams, like the Airborne, have mortars. So they have like a small mortar with each squad. So they can fire those as well. So it's nice to see some different weapon options as well. 
But I shall leave this video there. Thank you very much, anyone who's joined me. I hope you all have a very nice weekend. And I'll see you all during the week where we will play through a little campaign.